From the book of Enoch, Noah's amazing alien birth prompts his father Lamech to seek advice from his father Methuselah, who then travels to find his father Enoch, whom resides with the gods. Together, we will retrace the story from Sumer to the Mayan lost realm of the winged serpent, where the ancient Aztec race abandons the Great Pyramid of the Sun at Teotihuacan for a new home, where the eagle is clutching a serpent poised on a cactus growing from a rock in the lagoon, establishing Tenochtitlan, today's Mexico City. Welcome to the Seventh Planet Broadcasting special series, The Anunnaki, for Season 1, Episode 3. I am your host, Matt LaCroix, and I am joined by best-selling author and radio personality, Gerald Clark, and truth seekers and ancient ancestral researchers, Krista Clark, Troy Gothard, and Billy Carson. Come with us as we follow the evidence trail from ancient Sumer to the Mayan lost realm of the winged serpent. The Book of Enoch discusses Noah's alien birth which surprisingly leads us to our destination to seek out the land of Nod, east of Eden. Is there a connection to be found from the Book of Enoch, linking an ancestral lineage with the Aztec gods and deities of Mexico? Perhaps the Mexican national flag symbolism holds some clues. The Aztec capital of the city of Tenochtitlan may have fallen in 1521 to Cortes, but the secrets hidden by the world's largest metropolis, Mexico City, was once occupied by advanced beings. To understand the full story, we must first start at the beginning. Thousands of miles away, across the great seas, and the land between two rivers, Mesopotamia. For it is here in Mesopotamia where the famous biblical story of the Garden of Eden has its origins. Our modern day teachings have smeared this story to change it into what seems like a silly fairy tale. When looking at the evidence left behind for it, it becomes a historical reality. In the story of the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve give birth to two male children known as Cain and Abel. Enki was the actual father of Cain with Eve, while Abel's father was Adam. In separating myth from fact, we see that the Garden of Eden was located in the city of Eridu, which can be found near the mouth of the Euphrates and Tigris rivers in the Fertile Crescent of modern-day Iraq. This area is known as the Cradle of Civilization and is where our story begins. The Sumerian records speak extensively about this garden location in the affiliated temple city at the headwaters of the Persian Gulf. Eridu was reported to be the first city on earth and is over 400,000 years old as listed in the Sumerian Kings list and first site where kingship was lowered to earth. The Sumerian god Enki designed a paradise for the children of mankind until they were banished by Enel to wander the earth. Many may be wondering, is there still evidence left for a Ridu today? Located in the deserts of Iraq, the ancient ruins of the city of Eridu can be seen by an expedition that was done by the British Museum. With so many important archaeological discoveries yet to be uncovered, the real question must be, why has this site and so many others in ancient Mesopotamia been ignored and forgotten? What secrets do they not want us to find out about our past? One of the most well-known early biblical accounts is the story of Cain and Abel. Conflict arose between these two brothers, and Cain killed his brother Abel. There are many classic works of art from earlier time periods capturing the sheer brutality behind this action. Cain kills his brother because the gods favor Abel over him during a show of sacrifice. This represents the first murder from another human. According to the Bible, Yahweh Enlil banished Cain to the land of Nod, east of Eden. According to the biblical account of Genesis 5.1, it states, And Adam knew his wife again, and she bore a son and called him Seth. Adam and Eve's second child became the famous line of Seth. The line of Seth is detailed in the Bible, whereas the line of Cain is omitted. The Atrahasis Noah story contains some of the keys to the puzzle for understanding our origins. 
For had Atrahasis, Noah, and his family perished during the Great Deluge, mankind may have been extinct. Is there perhaps more to Noah and his story than we've been taught? And does it perhaps have Anunnaki connections? Reading from the writings of the Book of Enoch, we learn the dramatic events of Noah's birth. After some days, my son Lethuselah took a wife for his son Lamech, and she became pregnant by him and bore a son. And his body was white as snow and red as the blooming of a rose. And the hair of his head and his long curls were white as wool, and his eyes were beautiful. And when he opened his eyes, he lit up the whole house like the sun, and the whole house was very bright. And on it he levitated in the hands of his wife, opened his mouth, and conversed with the Lord of Righteousness. And his father Lamech was afraid of him and fled, and came to his father Methuselah. And he said to him, I have begotten a strange son, different and unlike man, and resembling the sons of God in heaven. And his nature is different, and he is not like us. And his eyes are as the rays of the sun, and his face is glorious. Noah has been portrayed in carvings and paintings since biblical times. He can be seen with his wife by his side. Noah had many names, such as Atrahasis or Zayas Sudra, where he was the king of the city of Shurapak in Mesopotamia. Looking at Noah's genealogy table, we see that he and his wife bore three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. From these three sons, humanity spread out across much of the world. In looking at the story of Noah, you have to ask, why was he saved? And allowed to live, considering God or Yahweh decided to wipe mankind off the face of the earth with a great deluge. Perhaps the answer lies with who Noah's real father was, connecting to his possible Anunnaki origins. In the Book of Enoch, Lamech seeks counsel from Methuselah and Enoch because of the divine nature of the birth. But why would they seek the counsel of Enoch for an alien-like birth, and who exactly was Enoch? The story of Enoch accounts for a trip where he visited the gods in heaven and extensively wrote about the wonders of the stars and places beyond Earth. Since Enoch possessed vast amounts of knowledge, far beyond even our current time period of technology, we must ask, was Enoch really a god? And was he summoned to Noah's birth because of his ancient Anunnaki connections? The Sumerian Kings List records the extraordinary age of these beings and shows they were far more than just human. According to the list, Alalim, the first king of Eridu, ruled for eight shars or 28,800 years. Looking deeper into the dates given in the Sumerian Kings List and the book of Genesis, we find that the ages of the biblical Adam, Seth, and even Noah lived to be over 900 years old. Some of the kingship reigns are shown to be even longer, with some spanning thousands of years. Is it time for us to start strongly considering that these ancient kings and earliest lineage to Adam, Enoch, and Noah are directly connected to the Anunnaki? We must look at the unique ages that these beings lived to see evidence for ancient astronaut DNA intervention in our past. The being Enoch lived to 365, while Lamech lived to 777. Is there a connection to the age of Enoch and our current calendar year of 365 days? Perhaps the number 777 is also symbolic since Anki, the master geneticist, was represented by the number seven. The hidden symbology within these numbers seems to speak volumes to the truth. Religions from all over the world follow the line of Seth, but what about the line of Cain? Statues depicting Cain in Paris, France, show him consumed with shame and remorse. Let's look a little deeper into the genealogy table for Cain and see if there is an important connection back to the beginning known as Enoch and Mesoamerica. Following the line of Cain, 
This obscure history begins far to the east of Eden after God banished Cain to the land of Nod. From the book of Genesis 5.1, it reads, After Cain killed his brother, he was banished by Yahweh to the land of Nod. Where is this famous land of Nod? And could it really be in Mexico? The land of Nod is a place mentioned in the book of Genesis of the Hebrew Bible located on the east of Eden, where Cain was exiled by God after Cain had murdered his brother Abel. According to Genesis 4.16, And Quayan went out from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. The word Nod in Hebrew means to wander. Could Mesoamerica have been Cain's wandering place east of Eden? Who was Cain, really? Following the historical clues, striking connections are in Mesoamerica. Is Tenochtitlan the home of the lost realm of the exiled Cain, who built a city and called it by his son's name, Enoch? Notice the striking connection in the name broken down, T. Enoch. Titlan. Of the last century, 1945, something like that, when the government decided to build this inhabitational area, they start to excavate to put the uh, bases of all of these uh, buildings, and they found the ruins. And tla, uh, Tlatelolco means, in Nahuatl language, the Sands Hill, the Sands Island. Ah. And right here, Tlatelolco was a very important neighborhood because right there in the middle of this square are the ruins of the most important, of the most important pyramid that it was built in this place, dedicated to the so, uh, the fire god. Fire god. Hue Teotl mm -hmm. is the old god, is the fire god. And on the top, this pyramid had two temples on the top. One temple was dedicated to the fire god, Hue Teotl. And the other temple was dedicated to Tlaloc, Tlaloc. the rain god. Oh, yeah. And yeah? then the third god here was Quetzalcoatl. After Yahweh sentenced Cain to exile, a protective sign for the genetic line of his family was set forth for all of time. Was the purpose of this so that anyone finding him would not smite him? What exactly was the mark of Cain, and do we still see it present today? Was the mark of Cain represented as the absence of facial hair, as we find in the genetic traits in the lost realm of Mexico? The absence of facial hair seems to be an important clue to this forgotten line of Cain, which is still found today in modern Mexico and in Central and South American indigenous populations. To understand the story of Cain better, we must look at the evidence left behind describing the symbolic connections to the foundings of Tenochtitlan. The Akkadian epic called The Legend of Etana consists of cuneiform tablets from ancient Sumer that refer to a king known as Atana and the founding of a new city spawned by a mystical experience. What was the legend of Atanya really referring to when speaking about Cayenne and the Serpent King? Does the legend of Atanya hold the keys to understanding the truth behind who founded the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan, represented through the serpent and eagle? Upon closer inspection of the Atana seal, it is easy to see the strong connections back to the story of Cain and the founding of the city of Tenochtitlan. In the story of Tenochtitlan, a mandate was issued from the Teotihuacan god that ordered the Aztec people to abandon the city and move southwest until finding a sign that verified their chosen destination to create a new cultural center. Migrating southwest from Teotihuacan, the Aztecs discovered a large marshy lake where they crested a small mountain knoll to witness the great vision they had been promised by the gods. There, amidst a marshy island, an eagle was seen perched on a cactus, 
growing from a rock, clutching a serpent in its talons. The Aztec people venerate this great symbolic event, which in the legend of Etana leads us to believe that Tenochtitlan is the city that Cain built for his son Enoch, who gives final counsel regarding Noah's birth and the future prophecies. Many stone carvings can be seen portraying this symbolic image of the eagle and cactus by the Aztec. It is the key to understanding the symbology behind the gods known as the winged serpents of Mesoamerica. Could the symbology involve the Anunnaki, specifically the eagle and the snake? The Mexican people take great pride in their heritage, and the famous story of the founding of Tenochtitlan can be seen in dramatic statues in downtown Mexico City, portraying the eagle and cactus built over the ruins of the ancient past. The winged serpent theme can be seen throughout Mesoamerica, but one of the best examples is found on the Mexican flag, clearly portraying the eagle and serpent. Has this secret symbology about these ancient gods been hiding in plain sight all along? With all the connections we have made to this important city, many may be wondering, what exactly did the ancient city of Tenochtitlan look like? Absent a photographic record of Tenochtitlan, the Aztec capital city was depicted in many classic works of art in significant detail. Built atop an island in a large, shallow lake known as Texcoco, the city of Tenochtitlan grew to become the most advanced social and cultural center in Mesoamerica, with a population over 300,000 inhabitants at its peak. During the reign of Moctezuma I, an important levy was constructed in the lake by a being known as Nesawakoyati, who removed much of the stagnant, brackish water and replaced it with spring water thereby greatly improving the health conditions of the city. Nesawakoyoti was a philosopher, architect, and poet who is credited with the golden age of the Aztec. He united many surrounding cultures and brought in laws, scholarship, and artistry. The real question remains, who exactly was Nesawakoyoto, and was he connected to the Anunnaki gods? Scale models have been created from the archaeological data and writings, bringing the lost city of Tenochtitlan back to life. At the height of its power, the influence of the Aztec people of Tenochtitlan reached far beyond the surrounding regions, and advanced commercial routes were developed that brought goods from places as far away as the Gulf of Mexico, Pacific Ocean, and even the Inca Empire in South America. The city is believed to have one of the largest cultural centers on Earth at the time. This golden Aztec age would not last forever. The powerful arm of the Catholic Church sent Cortes and a fleet of soldiers to Mexico to conquer the region and acquire gold. Was the purpose of his mission to really destroy the teachings of Enoch, Quetzalcoatl, and Kukulkan? Looking into the details of this account reveals much more than meets the eye. To understand the real motive and success behind Cortes conquering the Aztec Empire, consider the ancient promise Quetzalcoatl gave the Mayan people. To return in the year of his birth, one read. Could it be mere coincidence that Cortes showed up in 1519, a one read year? Did Spain devise an elaborate plan to fool the forces of Moctezuma, who met Cortes on the Gulf Coast of modern Veracruz, bearing gifts thinking he was Quetzalcoatl? Veracruz is the location of the true cross, which is what the word translates to mean in Spanish, derived from the Catholic Church. In 1521, Cortes combined forces with the rival Tlaxcaltec people to destroy the Aztec city of Tenochtitlan. His forces surrounded the city and isolated the residents inside, laying siege to them for 75 days. This barbaric act led to utter famine for the Aztec people and countless died from starvation. The ancient city of Tenochtitlan was ransacked and leveled to the ground, becoming nearly lost to time as the metropolis of Mexico City was built over the ashes. Today, Mexico City has an astounding population of over 25 million people. 
Looking at this enormous city now, it can be hard to imagine all the past history that occurred almost erased from our memories. We have to remember history is written by the victors. Using modern computer technology, the Great Temple Mayor is reconstructed as a 3D model. Note the tremendous size of the structure relative to the modern buildings around it. The mighty accomplishments of the ancient builders are impressive. The ruins of Tenochtitlan can be seen overshadowed by the mighty structures of the Catholic Church, a harbinger of past conquests. This is a chilling reminder of the ultimate power behind the church and serves as a warning to all those who oppose them. The ruins for what remains of the city of Tenochtitlan are preserved as a historic site and can be visited in the center of Mexico City. The most important temple still standing is known as Templo Mayor and is now part of a museum that is studied by experts all over the world. The Tenochtitlan ruins provide important clues to aid in understanding the great Aztec Empire and the legacy of Cain. How many countless relics and writings have been lost to time, buried beneath the bustling metropolis of Mexico City? With so much vanquished history lost to us, hidden from our perception, the truth about the legacy of Cain and the influences of the being known as Enoch is just now coming to light. Why has such important information for the line of Cain showing probable links to the Aztec people been suppressed? Are there profound historical secrets that the conquistador cultures don't want to be known? Is there perhaps a connection to the writings of Enoch and the Emerald Tablets found nearby in Teotihuacan? Could Enoch and Quetzalcoatl have been incarnations of the same being? explaining missing details about the biblical line of Cain and the deference to his lofty advice. Could the book of Enoch and the true identity of Cain's lineage been the catalyst for the Aztec targeted destruction, especially by the Roman Catholic Church for thousands of years? Join us for the next Anunnaki series, season one, episode four, revisiting a calendar quarrel in Egypt that spawned an important westward overseas migration leading to an epic point in history from which a countdown to our ultimate conscious evolutionary state was codified in the Olmec Calendrical Stone.